Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me on this kind of, in my opinion, fall makeup look. It's cool, obviously cool neutral tones and chocolatey kind of tones. So not everybody's idea of fall because it's not warm tones and it's not sort of oranges and browns necessarily, but it's what I've been loving. So I posted a photo of this look on my Instagram and lots of you were requesting a tutorial and I just kind of wanted to film it because it's kind of a bit different from like the spring and summer looks that I've been doing. But this is kind of what I like to wear. I like to go back to my cool neutrals. I like to go to sort of chocolatey tones, hot chocolate vibes during autumn slash fall, depending on where you are. Um, and yeah, this is just lipstick on my teeth, so. Let's get started. So cold weather has officially hit here, like literally overnight, I swear to God, one day I was like sunbathing in the garden and the next I was taking hot water bottle to bed with me. So that's been fun. So literally the first thing that's happened, obviously put your heating on, freezing cold outside. My lips are screaming, screaming. So I've been there attacking them with just anything I can find to put on my lips. I use Barley Body's um, lip balm just all the time during the day and then at night I put like lan lanolin on my lips, just the pure stuff because, oh my God. I mean, my lips struggle at the best of times, but in the winter. So as always, I'm just gonna prime my lids with the old Soft Ochre Pinty Potty. I will probably forget to tell you everything that I'm using, so of course everything will be listed down below. So in the winter, my husband works away quite a lot, and he's just sort of had his first couple of trips in the last month or so, and I've like instantly got ill because that is just how the world works, you know? I think mainly it's because I don't sleep very well when he's not here, so I just get so tired. Obviously, I've got the kids by myself, I've got the dog, got work, got everything, school runs on my own, um, and then I don't really sleep very well when he's not here. So I get really exhausted and just really run down and tired, and then I just get, end up getting, like, lose my voice, get cough, get cold, just feel like absolute bag of poop for the entire time, which is just not what you need when you you know, have young children to be entertained by yourself 24 hours a day. And then obviously it was like school holidays, so I had both of them full time. But literally, I swear to God, as soon as October started, I was like PJs on, hot water bottle in bed, hot chocolate started. And this was just the kind of makeup that I started wearing as well, because I just feel like so toasty and cozy. I don't mind the cold weather really, I actually quite like it. I love snuggling down under your duvet. I love a hot water bottle. I love hot chocolate. I love just being warm and cuddly and toasty. So I don't really mind, you know, the cold weather outside. It's just my lips that do. So I'm going in with this deepest shade in this Dior Cool Neutrals palette. And that's literally basically all I'm gonna use other than my lid shade. Because it's just the ultimate chocolatey, color and it's got a sort of really nice cool undertone obviously and it's also got like a hint of like almost a plummy tone to it and I just love it. I don't see why autumn has to be like all warm tones. I get that like you know that's kind of nature's vibe during autumn but for me I just like sort of chocolatey rusty colors berries i like during autumn as well what do you guys feel i feel like in the spring and summer i go for like brights and pastels and lots of peaches and that's kind of you know the thing during spring and summer but i swear as soon as it gets a bit cooler i just want warm toasty vibes so another thing that has come from my husband being away a lot is that i signed up to Netflix. I know I'm literally the last person on earth to get a Netflix, but finally I'm with the plan. I'm in, I am all in. So, so far I have watched the whole of Black Mirror. I had watched the first and second se season because that was on 
like regular TV. Um, but now I've watched all of the rest of those. And then I watched the Making a Murderer series one and two, which has like changed my whole life. And by the way, strange story, but we put our house back on the market last month and the, one of the estate agents came round to um, just familiarise with the property so that when she was doing viewings, she could, you know, know where she was going, um, you know, knew what each room was and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, she was doing that and I left her in the house with my husband while I went to pick up my daughter from school and she literally goes to school like over the road. And when I got back, I like she was leaving. So I just sort of waved to her and was like, bye. Um, she got in her car. So that was like obviously like quarter past three because I was just getting back from the school run. Um, anyway, two hours later, the estate agents called me up and were like, hi, um, you know, so-and-so was coming out to your property today. Can we just check, you know, is she still there? Like, what time did she leave? Because she hasn't come back to the office. And I immediately was like, oh my God, we're on Making a Murderer season three. Don't worry, she has turned up now, otherwise I probably wouldn't be telling you this story because I'd be in prison. But that series is truly terrifying. I felt like the first one was really terrifying because, you know, it just seemed like, do you know, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not I believe he actually did it, Stephen Avery, whether he actually committed the murder or not. It's definitely feasible and possible that he did. And I feel like the opposite is also true, that, you know, he didn't. What I definitely feel to be the case is that there was not enough evidence and that they're certainly given that like the you know the kind of opposing evidence that the defense found or disproved or disputed or whatever i don't feel like he i feel like it's bizarre that he actually got convicted of the evidence and the cases that both sides presented that blows my mind <clears throat> so literally i'm using this middle one at the top sort of bronze like bright bronzy vibe and i'm just kind of smudging that in the middle not too heavy just a little bit of something sort of brighten that area. I want to keep it quite smoky and warm. Warm vibes. But yeah, that was truly terrifying. What else did I watch? So then I watched the first season of Stranger Things, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then I've really got into Orange is the New Black and that's really all I've been watching since because there's like 10 seasons and I've started at the beginning. So obviously I have a lot to get through but that's really helped me because i just go to bed with it on and i feel like a little bit of like background noise when you can't sleep is really helpful like white noise i'm like a baby i need a white noise like machine i need someone to shush me to sleep maybe that's a service that i can start offering to people I had a bit of a like rubbish phase with my channel like i've been getting a little bit disheartened i'm not gonna lie I'm usually just very much like I go with the flow, you know, I kind of like just decide what I want to post, what I'm thinking about, what I think is interesting, what I think people might want to see. But like the last couple of months, I've really been trying to kind of think outside the box to kind of give people something a bit different, mix things up a bit, make things a bit more interesting. And I've really been putting a lot of effort and thought into what I'm putting up. And I was really hoping to see some, you know, real sort of growth and just progress from it. And instead i feel like my views have actually kind of dropped a little bit in the last month they're coming back up a bit now but i just had a really bad kind of end of september beginning of october for views and it was like disheartening a little bit i think the issue with um youtube is it's just so unpredictable like something that you think is this amazing idea and oh yeah people will love this and then it completely flops and, it, and you just really there's just no way to predict and then the opposite is true you know you put something out that you just think oh no one's going to watch this and then it's really really popular and it's just very hard to predict so it can be quite if you're kind of you know really pushing and really making an effort to kind of drive things forward and you're really trying to grow and just get people to see and find your channel um, and then just you know nothing comes for it from it it can be just a little bit one confusing like what is going on here and two a bit like disheartening just because you're not really sure like what else can you possibly do really you know 
But I think the main thing is, is that I get very much focused on like what is not working or what you know progress I'm not making and I think my husband is really good at reminding me actually how much progress and growth you know we've had in the first like 18 months of my channel like given what my you know my original goals were which we completely smashed just to kind of focus on that a little bit so I'm trying to do that a lot more but it's very hard as a small youtuber to get people to find your channel and I think that's what I'm kind of looking to try and do is to find ways of actually just getting my channel out there a little bit because I think it's you know it's totally fine if people don't like me don't like my channel that is to be expected but I want people to actually see it find it discover it to make the choice you know either they'll like me and join in or they won't and they'll find an another channel they prefer so I guess what I'd like is to to be a bit more discoverable so one of the things I've been trying to do is I've been like polling you guys so I hope you haven't minded because I know you know that could be annoying so I've been trying to take polls on what you guys want to see like whether you are interested in this product or whether you're interested in you know these reviews or do you want this video and just really asking you guys because to me I just kind of feel like my channel is run by you guys and I feel like you are almost like yeah, I feel like you guys are kind of like, oh, investors in my channel. You know, you invest your time and your energy into my channel. So I just really want to make sure that I'm kind of keeping you happy, I guess. And that I'm like, you know, you're involved in that you're sort of telling me and sharing with me like what you want to see. And that I'm kind of catering to, you know, what you want out of my channel and that kind of stuff so that's why i kind of started like polling you all the time on my community page you know you invest your time and your effort into my channel and so i want to involve you in the decision making process as far as you know what you want to see what you want to see more of what products you're interested in what reviews you're interested in all that kind of stuff and uh, obviously i can only kind of be myself and what i know and what i I'm passionate about but I do love hearing from you guys and getting input from you guys because ultimately you are the people who decide whether or not you want to watch my channel and you come first you know I, as far as yes I do want to you know grow and I want my channel to get bigger and have more viewers more to the family however first and foremost it's about keeping my existing family and my existing subscribers happy and I guess that's what has been tricky because I have nearly 15,000 subs now yet my videos are getting you know generally three to four thousand views and I know that you know most people don't get the same number of views as subscribers but to me that's quite a low percentage so in some ways I am obviously not getting something right for a lot of my subs because then choosing not to watch even though they are subscribed and I know there's a little bit about you know YouTube's algorithm and because I'm smaller I'm not appearing you know high up search results I'm not appearing high up in notifications and things like that but I don't know I just I feel like that we could be doing better you know we could definitely be doing better and I'm that's just the way I am like I'm always like that in my job like I focus always on what could be better what did we get wrong what could we work on what could be improved as opposed to all of the good which is not a bad thing just means I sometimes don't sort of take time to actually you know give myself a pat on the back by the way I know my foundation is quite a bit darker than my face but my body is still quite tan so I've started mixing winter and summer shades in my foundations because I'm in that weird in between summer and winter soon we will be in full winter skin give it a few more weeks I think the thing is because I catch the sun so easily like even just you know there's it's a sunny day here today even though it's cold if I was to go out and sit out in the sun I'd still catch some colour so it's it's hanging in there because we have had a really sunny October so you know just where I'm outside a lot with the kids and stuff I have been keeping my colour longer than you would expect for October 
So this is the Huda concealer, by the way, which I am obsessed with. I've got lots of concealers, but I really struggled to pick anything but that one up because I have been loving it. I reviewed it, so if you want to see the whole review, find out a bit more about it, go check that out. But essentially, I have nothing bad to say about it, other than if you are sensitive to scents, because it does have this staple Huda scent, but at the same time, during the review, I didn't notice the smell at all. It was only when like someone asked me that I went back and sniffed it that I noticed it had a scent. So it's not like the powder where you know you put it on or the foundation and you know you can really smell it. But it is definitely scented, so you know scent breaks you out or something like that. That's the only reason I would not give it a try. I had like a whole day with my, just my, me and my daughter yesterday and oh my god it was just heaven we went to the cinema because that is like her favorite thing to do is to go to the cinema it's becoming like one of our traditions i think it's really important that one i spend time on my own with my daughter and two that my husband does as well because i think it's so important for like father-daughter relationships like i was so lucky as a child, teenager, all of the above, to spend a lot of time with just me and my dad because my dad was the one who took me to all my swimming competitions. So we spent, you know, a lot of time in the car, a lot of time in hotels, traveling around together, racing and sharing that whole journey together. So I have a really close relationship with my dad. But I think I can see it being quite easy if you are a girl and you don't have, you know, something in common with your dad and you don't spend a lot of time with him, I feel like it'd be really easy to sort of have a, you know, an uncomfortable relationship with your dad or just not a close one really. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, obviously we spent two years, her first two years of life, just me and her, you know, while my husband was at work, obviously. Um, and then her brother came along and then since then, you know, we've been a little, trio and I just think it's important now she started school and I see less of her that we have some one-on-one -on -one special mummy daughter time so whenever we can we do that so she's on school holidays at the moment and we still so my little boy is in nursery and he only goes like two days a week so one of the days where he was still gonna go to nursery while she was off school, and I just took her for a little mummy daughter day and it was just heaven. We went to see Littlefoot at the cinema, which has, um, who's it having it? So it's, I know James Corden was in it and um, Zendaya was in it. And is it Channing Tatum, I wanna say? And Danny DeVito, it was just the loveliest kids movie like she's only four so we don't like you know sometimes like even like cartoony type films can be a bit scary in places you know and like when there's monsters or people you know being attacked or whatever it can be a little bit scary so that one was perfect it had like some really good songs we had like a little dance in our seats together it was really cute really funny just totally harmless nothing like particularly scary nothing you know that was gonna scar her for life like when we watched bfg see the thing is bfg was my favorite film as like a kid apps like the original absolutely obsessed with it but you forget don't you what is in films and actually all those films they have something scary or sad like the lion king you know the dad dies that whole thing is quite scary you know jungle book the snake and the tiger are both really scary they all have something scary or really sad or that may you know raise questions from young kids and bfg we started watching it when the new one came out and i got the dvd and i was like yes i love this movie literally the first thing that happens in that movie is that a giant steals a little girl from her bedroom window in the night time and i was watching it like ooh. This may have been a mistake. And then we went to see the Peter Rabbit movie as well. And like, again, in that, at the beginning, Mr. McGregor, who, you know, is not a nice guy, but he like drops dead of a heart attack, literally like drops dead in his vegetable patch of a heart attack. And I was like, oh, he's 
gone to sleep. He's having a little lie down there. <laughs> so he's going to raise questions later. But she seemed to just accept it. She didn't really ask any questions. But I was like, and you know, obviously I don't want to hide. You know, I know that people die and she's going to find that out at some point. But yeah, just not during Peter Rabbit, you know. It's supposed to be a little bit of harmless fun. I don't know why they have to murder people. Oh, so yes, next on my list is the, for the Netflix viewing. I'd love to hear your recommendations for what else I need to watch on Netflix. So, so far on my watch list, I've got the like House on Haunted Hill or the Hill House or whatever, you know, you know the one, you know. Um, I've got the Amanda Knox documentary, which is right up my street. Um, what else have I got? So, 13 Reasons Why, that's on my list. What else? Can't remember what else, but yeah, please hit me up with your suggestions below. And no spoilers for anything that I'm watching. No spoilers or you'll immediately be blocked. Did I get it? Did I get it? I got it. Oh my God, that never happens. Normally it's in there for about six weeks, just slowly blinding me. So obviously Christmas is coming up, if you hadn't heard. I will be doing a Christmas gift list recommendations if it isn't already up. If it is, I will link it down below. But I haven't filmed it yet. Um, but yeah, that has been really fun. Just looking for stuff to go in there. I'm just such a sucker for like Christmas box sets, Christmas gift sets, stuff like that. I just think you get really good value for money in them and I love all the Christmas collections yes I do packaging it's just I live for it I live for Christmas what are you guys doing for Christmas we are going to spend it at my sister's house because my parents live closer to her so they can kind of go back and forth so we are going to go and spend Christmas with her her husband is a chef so you know there's no arguments about who's like doing the cooking he's just doing it um so that's easy he because he's a chef he doesn't get like a huge amount of time off work like the rest of us get you know a week or two off off work at christmas whereas he only gets like two or three days because then obviously lots of bookings around that time so it's easier for us to go to him so he can actually spend those days at home albeit still cooking for everybody because that's how he is you know he just like loves to feed everybody and i guess it's hard if you're like a chef you know to sit and watch other people mess everything up and and just make a massive hash of it, it must be quite a painful experience because you're gonna have to eat that so i think he'd just rather do it himself than watch us make a pig's ear of it to be honest so this blush, by the way, is Max Swiss chocolate. And if you see me using any kind of, or you see me posting and I've got kind of this chocolatey cheek situation, this is one of my favorite blushes. It looks so dark. And when I bought it, I was like, what the hell, what am I doing? But with a light hand, it's so nice on the cheeks especially like this time of year it literally feel i feel like when i put this blush on i turn into a hot chocolate with marshmallows obviously what are you guys christmas traditions we have started so many so we have christmas eve boxes for the kids and they always have a new movie in there a new christmas pjs so they all get in their pjs and watch the christmas movie sometimes it's polar express or the grinch always a Christmassy movie and we get them hot chocolate marshmallows and they all sit and just watch the christmas movie together and it is heaven we always go ice skating a little bit before um christmas in like sort of november time we'll go ice skating all together apart from last year my little boy just like firmly refused to get involved in that he was just like i, I don't know what you guys are doing but i want no part in this evil slidey thing so he just refused then <coughs> so i'm hoping we might be a little bit more successful with him on the ice this year that would be nice um and then 
we always go to the Christmas lights, which is like a festival of light that they have near us that we always go to. They have lots of like illuminations and decorations to check out. Obviously fireworks and Halloween kind of starts it all off and it kind of builds up from there. So we start off like around this time of like Halloween and fireworks displays. Then we like lead into like the ice skating and then we'll go like all Christmas shopping. We'll go to like a meet Santa thing. Although again, my children, they just hate anyone dressed up as something, anyone like in a costume, they are not on board with it, which I guess is not a bad thing, but they won't go anywhere near. I mean, they love Santa, they talk about him, you know, they get that he's a good guy with good intentions, but they don't want to go anywhere near the guy. So we'll have to see how that goes. Maybe this will be the year that they finally forgive him for whatever, you know, they feel like he's done, but we'll just have to see. But yeah, we always do that. We always go somewhere where they have reindeers to look at and Santa to read us a story. Although usually, like I said, we do that at a safe distance. We always spend Christmas with my parents and my sister, at least Christmas day just so the kids can all be together. It's just lovely to see like Christmas. I mean, I've always been obsessed with Christmas. It's been like my favorite time of the year, absolutely by a mile. But once you have kids, it just takes on this whole new level of amazingness. It's just incredible. I just love, like, since I've had the kids, I haven't even really been like opening my presents, you know, cause I just love, I just want to watch them open their presents. It's just, amazing like the magic of it is just like nothing else every year also in like the middle of november we do a christmas photo shoot with our amazing photographer she has done all of our like newborn shoots she did my maternity shoot she's just amazing with kids and getting like you know amazing photos out of them which is no mean feat every year we do like a christmas photo with the kids and that goes on like our calendar. So some of our family, we give them like a calendar, of just like photos of the kids throughout the year. It's like their little Christmas present. Um, and so that is like obviously December each year is that photo. And we also send out Christmas cards with their little photo on. And that's always fun because she just makes it so fun for them. You know, she gives them like candy canes and sweets and chocolates and hot chocolate, you know, while they're doing the photos. And she's always got it set up just so cute and Christmassy. So there you have it. Here is the finished look for this like chocolatey, warm and toasty, yet cool, neutral look. Who knows? I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to come back and so we can see each other again. As I said, everything will be listed down below in case I forget to tell you what I was using, which undoubtedly I did. So yeah. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye for now.